Yeah, after reviewing the game and looking back, uh, you know, pleased with, uh, for the most part, our, our defense, how hard they played. And times really, really well. I thought there was a couple plays that we'd love to have back, the, the hits that they took and uh, the long run. But those things, uh, those things will happen when you see a lot of snaps, but I think they're playing a pretty good level. On special teams, uh, we thought we kind of had a chance on one of the punt returns and a couple of little details slid. Uh, you know, that's the thing that's so interesting is you're only going to get so many, we keep talking about so many pitches to hit uh, in special teams in that kicking game. All their kickoffs went out of the end zone. We got no chances there. Uh, punt return. Our defense made them punt a bunch of times. Um, and we had, you know, one for sure that would have would have been an opportunity to get something done. And we got a few yards, but not what we thought we should have got. And then on offense, you know, I think, uh, you know, that's where a lot of the frustration is because you see the flashes and, uh, you know, those flashes, another word for that is, cons you know, inconsistency. And, uh, you know, at times it's really, it's impressive at times. And at other times it's really, really frustrating, I think, to everybody involved. And so we're, uh, you know, really proud of the kids, um, how hard they're, they're really playing how they're staying together because I know there's a lot of frustration. We talk about it. I think we're all frustrated and not a lot of finger pointing going on and those type of things. And so I'm really proud of them for that. And we're down to two, two big, you know, two big weeks and we're really not even talking about it in terms of two big weeks. It's really one big week for us to, uh, you know, continue to play at a high level on defense and take the next step on offense really is what, what we're talking about. Yeah. Early in the game, it looked like you had a real chance to just kind of step on the throats and mm -hmm. put up a pretty crooked number. And you had, I don't know if it's in your mind, you know, some drops or overthrows. I mean, how do you, can you kind of just go over what drops in your mind? Or? There's no question. We certainly left points on the, on the field there. Um, Without question, and that's you know that's really frustrating because I think when you're playing, you know, good teams and evenly matched teams, you you, you got to you got to have some playmakers that really, you know, make some plays for you. And some of that was uh, not even really spectacular type stuff. We just need to make plays. Now, with that being said, some of that's going to happen. You know, you're going to have some drops. You're going to have some plays you don't make. <clears throat> I just think it's frustrating to come out in the second half. And really, you know, we still did some things up and down the field. We just didn't get any points, which is, you know, you got to score points in this conference. I mean, you have to score points in this conference to win. And so, yeah, you could look at the first half and, and our coaches really are on offense. And, uh, you know, they know that, that that stung and that hurt. But I go back to the, you know, the second half that we really did nothing in the third quarter and then had four turnovers in the fourth quarter. I mean, that's what really kind of kind of gets you. And uh, <clears throat> had a kind of a crazy legs run. And Gaskins, of course, broke one. But other than that, it didn't look like you were able to really sustain anything in the running game. Did you see anything in particular, yeah. or was it just yeah. up? I would say this. Uh, you know, certainly in the first quarter slash first half, I thought we ran the ball pretty effectively. You know, a couple big runs. Arizona State is very good against the run. I mean, they're 25 in the country for a reason. You know, you play 10 games and you see those stats. Stats probably matter in terms of that type of stuff. And so we got a couple big, big hit runs. And there's a style of defense that you're going to get a big 35-yard run, possibly, or pass. And then it's zero, zero, negative one. And you try to – I mean, it's just a little bit of that style. So the first half was, you know, even though we left points on the board, I mean, I really think the game obviously went – as well as we could have hoped, um, just in terms of getting 17 points. And our defense played really, really good, really stymied them, that, you know, a lot of punts. And, and then just to come out in the second half and not generate points, you know, again, I always say it, then your defense kind of gets on their heels a little bit, especially when they're starting to get some momentum going and, and then you don't answer, and which we did. You know, we started to, we'd kind of move the ball down the field and then we'd have a turnover. Fourth quarter in particular, when I mean, you can sense the momentum you know, shift like that. I mean, when you reviewed it, I mean, what could you have done differently? What 
should you have done differently in, in those moments? Is there yeah. Well, I think in the fourth quarter, it kind of came down to those turnovers, you know, because we moved the ball down the field and then we had a turnover. And then we got the ball back, we moved the ball down the field, we had a turnover. And then we got the ball back, we moved the ball down the field, we fumbled. And so to simplify it, I mean, that's, you can't turn the ball over. I mean, we keep saying this, you know, we've had five turnovers a couple times. We had four in the fourth quarter. And so the question is, you know, how do you tighten that up? You know, how do you get better at that? And, you know, I think it comes back to practice and, you know, even at a higher, more efficient level. It's just so hard to simulate the And I think when the later in the year, it gets harder and harder to simulate the game in practice. Um, but we have to do a better job than that. How do you practice the clutch situations? Uh, twice a week. Twice a week. Yep. Do you alter that at all or do you um, feel like you need to? No, we feel like we get pretty good work. Um, we still get team, you know, we, we, we're trying to get as much in as we can every week. We still do scout periods, but we still do good on good where we're just playing the game a little bit, whether it's in the red zone, whether it's whatever. And so those are some of our best periods because it's a little bit more game, like there's a little more speed on the field and those type of things. And you're not kind of staging it like you do a little bit for scout teams. Um, but yeah, I mean, just getting to your, your points, like, well, how, how, how do you become more consistent? How do you, how do, you do that? And I think, I think all that, you know, I don't think there's one answer to it. And we always say that if there's one answer, uh, you can usually get that fixed. But I think it's a combination of those things. Um, and and we're, we're, you know, uh, in a maddening way, trying to figure out every little thing to do that, you know, because, you know, nobody's more frustrated at this situation than the people in this building. And... Um, so we can be frustrated all we want. We can't let that stymie progress. And uh, so how do we do that? You know, and it comes back to, you know, our attention to detail in the meetings and then really our focus at practice and the speed that we practice with so you can kind of simulate the game situation the best you can. Chris, how, how would you characterize the confidence of the offense and specifically Jake as some of these opportunities came and went? And you guys were kind of struggling to, to, yeah. to finish. I think Jake's doing fine. You know, I think he made a couple throws that he'll learn from. You know, um, he hasn't really had a lot of those. Uh, I think one one was a one was a miscommunication between he and the receiver, and uh, the other one was a throw. I just he kind of scrambled out of there and didn't really need to do that. Um, and so, you know, he hasn't had a bunch of like. Uh, He's had very few just throws, just like, ah, you know, that's freshman type throws. You know, he hasn't had a lot of those, but he had, he had one of those, and, you know, he'll learn from those. Um, you know, I think the confidence in the, in the offense is an interesting question because in some ways we're uh, – in some ways it's – you can see some progress coming. You know, we're up and down the field. But at the end of the day, it's all about points. And so we're still not scoring the points that we need to score. And so I think that that's, that's the frustrating part to, to everybody involved. But I do think that there is some confidence. I mean, I think there's hope is what, you know, everybody feels. It's like you see this and it's like, okay, the kid threw for, you know, 400 yards. And, you know, at times we're explosive in the run game. We just, we have to be more consistent. After the game, that maybe this, this zero margin for error now gives you a little more sense of urgency going into practice and guys wanting to, wanting to get it done in practice. I mean, have you, have you seen a, a slide in terms of the level of practice? Have you not seen that sense of urgency recently? Or? No. I mean, I'm, I'm proud of these guys. Um, I don't really think people understand, like, how hard that is on these guys. I, they, you just don't unless you've been in it, you know, unless you played this game and been in a situation. And a lot of these guys have not been in a situation like this. So people just don't understand how frustrating, how hard it is to stay together, keep working hard when you're working so hard for months and months and not getting the results. And they have been. I thought last week was pretty good. You know, the practice was pretty good. Kind of showed up the first half. And for whatever reason, we, you know, didn't finish consistency in that second half. And so, you know, I expect nothing different this week. I really don't. 
Um, and in fact, I expect a little, uh, a heightened sense of, of urgency. That's, that's what I really think we'll get from these guys. Yeah, the, the year, the offense, you know, on, on a number of games, let's say, as, as everybody knows, has not produced, I'll say, the number of offensive touchdowns that you might think yep. would be almost linear with some of the yardage. Are those just, you can easily find plays that broke down? Is there anything trend there? Is there any mental mm -hmm. thing you see occurring game over game? Mm -hmm. Or is it just as simple as a, a mechanical thing in a couple of yeah. plays? Again, I kind of think we're all over the board there. You know, you'd like to look at some of the red zone stuff, and we haven't been horrendous in the red zone. You know, we've scored some points. We've got some field goals. Even our red zone touchdowns is, you know, in the ballpark. And so it's not just there. Although we've been in the red zone a couple times and got knocked out. We scored some touchdowns, got some penalties, had to settle for field goals in games. You know, so there's some issues there. Uh, you know, the turnover thing I think is humongous. I mean, I really do. I mean, we could probably just stop right there. If we could just not do that, we'd probably be a lot different, you know, in terms of those things. About not being able to make plays unless every, you know, everything's lined up perfectly or guys not winning one on one battles. I guess, it, do you see better production on that end in practice than you do in games? And how, how do you, I mean, how do you, how do you teach that? How do you get yeah. to that point where guys can, can bail out the quarterback if the ball's not right on the money? Right. You know, yeah, um, you know, I kind of see a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit of that in practice. Um, and I think some of that carries over into the game. You know, again, I don't think it's because the guys aren't, you know, into it and energy and trying to do it. But I do think there's some inconsistency there a little bit in practice that kind of carries over into the game. And so, I mean, again, that kind of goes back to practice. I mean, I'm just a firm believer, like, you know, you practice at a really high level. You, 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 over time and consistently, you're going you're gonna to play pretty good. And so, you know, I think that part of the thing can, can be better. You had teams where, where that was an issue before, and if so, was there something in particular you felt worked to correct it? Are you talking about in the passing game? Yeah. Um, no, not really. I mean, I haven't had a, you know, because again, I thought in the second half, like, you know, at times our pass protection is not what it needs to be. And so you can go there. I mean, Jay can't set his feet and he's got to get out of there in all those times. At times, he throws balls right on the money. We're getting some drops. You know, at times, uh, they're kind of 50 50 balls. Okay, let's go make a play, you know? And so it's kind of a little bit of all those type of things um, in our pass game. And I think at times, it looks pretty good. And at times, it's like, what are we doing here? You mentioned the youth of this team because of because of that. Did I problem. mention that? Because I really did not want to mention that. <laughs> you might have mentioned that. Yeah, you mentioned it. Well, <laughs> because of that, how critical can those extra bowl practices be when you have a team that's that's so young and, and like you said, hasn't mm -hmm. been through situations mm -hmm. like this before? Yeah, I think that those can be really important. Um, I, I think for the bigger thing, it just if that happens. It means we're, we're, we're trending upward. You know, we're, we're playing better. We're playing better football. We're winning. I think that's probably the most important thing when I think about, you know, a bowl situation. That's, that, that's the critical part there. Chris, how well do you know uh, Gary Anderson and what you expect from him uh, as he tries to build things back up down there? Well, I think the one thing is I know him, and I've known him for a while. And I've always really respected him. I've competed against him for a number of years. And the one thing I know is his teams play hard. And you just put the tape on and watch, and you'll see that. You know, they've had some injuries. And the injury thing, I mean, nobody's going to sit there and make excuses. And you got what you got. But he's, they've had some injuries. But you watch those kids play, and those kids compete. And they play hard. And I think that's a, you know, a reflection of, of Gary and his staff. And, I mean, I think those are good guys that know ball and they're tough guys, and I think that's how those guys play. A guy, <clears throat> pretty productive wide receiver, if I read the numbers right, who's says 6'5", 230. Yeah, yeah. So you just physically got to pay a little bit extra attention to how you handle that guy. and They got some – and, and, they, and uh, you know, another explosive receiver. We played against those guys last year, and they did some things against us as well, and so – you know, everybody in this conference, 
you know, has talent, and I think everybody plays hard. And there's different circumstances that come at teams that you got to be able to deal with and go. But you put a tape on, and you're thinking, okay, here we go. And there's a new set of problems, you know, and there's some good players there. And, uh, you know, they've had some injuries that they're going to get some guys back and those type of things, which will which will change their team. And that's, you know, that's just, you know, I think about, I think about that, you know, as the season goes on for different teams. You know, some teams are very good and their depth is better and they can handle some guys going out because guys are going to go out. And other teams really get bit by the bug and, and maybe at a certain position and it can just change your, it can change your fortune quickly. You guys have a little bit more for a quarterback running around this week maybe than some they've seen in the past? Yeah, both, both uh, you know, both those guys, they'll run both, both of them. And uh, Collins is, you know, an exceptional runner. I mean, he's extremely athletic, and and Mitchell can run too. He's fast. We see him a couple times pull the ball, and it's like, okay, he's got a little bit of speed too. And so, you know, it's a different style than Arizona, but those guys run. You know, the quarterbacks are runners. They'll keep you honest, and and uh, again, different style, but they run their quarterbacks. Chris, did you go away from the running game to the second half? Or was that a function of the ASU's changes? Um, you know, I think maybe analyzing it again, uh, you know, that fourth quarter. I say maybe not so much the second half, but maybe a little too much in the fourth quarter. Um, now, I will say this again. You know, we were going down the field throwing the ball, and we have the turnovers, which gets you. And then you kind of feel a little more urgency to get the ball back down there, and so sometimes it's hard to, to stay with it. And I think also kind of going into the game, knowing that, hey, what this defense does really well is stop the run. And so I think a combination of those things, you know, in the fourth quarter, you know, and I say we maybe run it a little bit more. I mean, I'm talking a handful of times that maybe, uh, you know, could have popped something to help the pass game stay on track a little bit. What benefits can you derive from going back on the road after a tough loss? What kind of benefits? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I think it's going to be a much different environment, you know, just weather. I mean, that was a different environment for the guys going down there into that, whatever the temperature was. I mean, it wasn't overly hot. It was a great day to watch football, to play it. You know, it certainly felt different. And so we'll be back into different elements on the road. So I think it'll be different. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. You know, I don't really think that's the, the issue, you know, going back onto the road or anything like that, you know, whether we're at home or at the, on the road. It's always nice to be at home, but you know I think our issues are just uh, um, don't don't really have to do with being on home or, or or on the road. It's just consistency of our play. In your experience, do you find that teams maybe come together a little bit better on the road? You know, there's some of that. You're together, um, but you know the process is pretty similar at home. You know, we still take them to a hotel. You still go. So you're talking about a you know, a few hours with a plane ride and those type of things. And uh, so, you know, I'm not, I'd rather be at home than on the road, but it's kind of that us against everybody else mentality, which, um, you know, I think these kids have been okay with. Wayne Washington hurt in practice? Or no, he was, I mean, and it was not any one play, you know, it's just been a little bit of a chronic leg issue that he's had. And sometimes it flares up on him and sometimes he can play through it and all those type of things. And it's nothing like one thing he got a shot or, you know, to his knee or his thigh or anything like that. It's just, it's just something he's kind of had to deal with. And sometimes it flares up. Is, is Qualls going to get a chance to he's, come back? He's a little bit slower than we thought he was going to be. You know, again, we'll see where he is this week. Um, but, you know, like I say, I mean, we're still, we're still hoping for his return before we're done playing for sure. Did that alter your run pass balance at all? No, really. No. You know, I think we got some guys. You know, Miles has always been doing a good job, but there's some other guys there that we have confidence in. And, you know, Dwayne's an explosive playmaker and those type of things, but it didn't really change our plans. When you throw the ball that much, and yes. that's more than you would probably yeah. prefer, What does that put any, besides the quarterback, does that put a little bit of extra different kind of pressure on, especially the linemen and even the receivers? be throwing that off and late well, in the game. I will tell you this. If you ask the quarterbacks and receivers, that's what they want to do. So now we know as coaches, 
to help take pressure off them, you got to be able to run the ball, and that can really help them. Um, and certainly the old line too, and if they're just teeing off every time. But you know, two out of three of those groups, that's what they want to do. That's what they came here to do. So I don't see that, see that being a problem. Um, the other thing is, you know, some of those throws are called runs. They're run pass options that he can give the ball. And so there's a handful of times he's pulling the ball out of there because he sees a better look. And so it's not like this, this many passes were called. It was like, hey, the run is called, and he has an option if he has more space to pull that ball out of there. Most of the time, you, you, you obviously review all that. In general, that part of the decision-making has been going pretty good as far as you're concerned? He's pretty good at it. Yeah, he's pretty good at it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so, you know, like everything, there's always a, a play or two, whether it's drop back or some of those things you're saying. Maybe not, uh, but for the most part, you know, I think he's got a pretty good feel for it. Non-game question. Uh, could you describe the Huskies' sideline protocol when a player has a, a concussion and who among the medical personnel has the final decision on who stays the game? Yeah, and so, you know, you know there's a spotter um, upstairs this year that has to do with um, – I think it comes from the league. I'm not sure. But so anything, anybody gets hit a weird way, and our trainers didn't see they, 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 they send them messages all the time, check this guy, check this guy. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing is, you know, our trainers and team doctors are right there. I mean, they're, they're, they're all over this. And if there's any question, guys aren't going back in. I mean, they just they set them right there. And so... Typically on your sideline, that makes that call. Well... Uh, Rob Schneider is our head trainer, and Kim Harmon's our our main our uh, chief team team doctor. And uh, you know, I think the one thing we feel very good about is that that situation that there's not going to be guys sliding back into the game that shouldn't be back into the game, and they're going to err on the side of safety. And and then you know, once the game's over the next day, there's a really strong protocol uh, for you know, at least three days in a row. And that's if the guy is symptom free right away. It's three days. If not, they don't even start the next two days of protocol until a guy has no symptoms whatsoever. Good. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thank you guys.